Well, good evening, yeah. everyone, and welcome to our show once again. I'm Kevin Long, the Judge John Payton, as always, riding shotgun with this evening. And Brad Leland of Friday Night Lights fame has joined us. And what better way to start off, well, uh, Friday night coming up than to talk about Friday Night Lights. Fred, obviously great having you here. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks. I, it's my pleasure to be here, and I get to be right behind my Plano Wildcat hat, which uh, I, I happen to have been a Plano Wildcat back in the old days. I am going to tell you what, I'm going to get right to the heart of this because I have a real bone to pick with Friday Night Lights. Not your show. Yes, sir. Not the movie. Yes, sir. But the book. <laughs> it was written by about a very good friend of mine named Gary Gaines, who was the head coach of Odessa Permian High School, was at Emerald Tascosa High School when I knew Gary, one of the most gracious, nicest men you could ever meet. In the book, I thought he took a shellac, and I thought he was made to sound like a ruthless punk, and he's not that way. No, he's a great guy, and uh, you know, I had for somehow I knew his wife at the checkout counter in Lubbock when I was in college. She worked at the Furs Grocery Store, and somehow that, that all came. And my sister lived right next door to the Odessa Permian coach for many years, but it wasn't Gary; it was the other coach, Wilkins. Okay. But uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh -huh. And and you know the, a lot of the truth was was uh, told in the film, and then there were some things I I thought I felt as well about uh, Buzz's interpretation uh -huh. of what the boosters were doing and and what was going on with redistricting and uh, some very touchy subjects. Well, why don't I put it this way? Tam Hollings had the. Uh, assistant athletic director at SMU, who was an assistant coach on that team, told me a story. When Buzz came in there, uh, they were told that they were going to be doing a Hoosiers-type story where the whole gist of it was going to be something to the effect of how a community rallies around an athletic team, and it turned out more to be a season-on-the-brink deal where they told a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that they said they were not going to do. That's true. That's true. And, you know, when we went to do the film after the book came out, we were very worried that the people in, as my sister used to call it, Slow Detha, <laughs> the people in Slow Detha, Pidlin Slow Detha area. No, but anyway, I love the people out there. But she said, you know, um, do not worry. When you get here, they will embrace you, and they did because we were had a feeling that because some people felt, uh, you know, as if some of the book had had you know taken some liberties, as you say. But when the, we went to do the film there, people loved the crew and they treated us like gold. We shot for a month in Odessa, a month in Austin, a month in Houston, and the people in Odessa were great to us. And of course, the, the film turned out much more positive and, and left out a lot of the things that you're talking about. Oh. Thank goodness, and, and thank goodness for the people of Odessa, but they were great, they loved us. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll get off my soapbox now, yeah. and we'll talk a little bit more. That TV series has just been an incredible hit. Thank you. I mean, that really, really has got to be um, I guess you would say, I'd say a once-in-a-lifetime type deal, but it's probably even more than that. It really is. And, uh, you know, we get to experience living the dream and, and having, uh, being able to, to do a show about a subject that's so near and dear to us. And, and next week um, we're nominated uh, for an Emmy, and so we'll be out there in L.A. And, and just being nominated is... is um, uh, you know, it's it's hard to even describe. So it doesn't. You know, we've won as far as I'm concerned. We don't have to win the Emmy next week for best TV show. But Kyle, of course, Chandler, our coach, uh, is nominated for best actor, and Connie Britton is nominated for best actress. And then our show, for the first time in five years, is nominated for for best television program of the year. And so it's very exciting to have that come true. Judge, a few questions. Right? Sure, Brad. First of all, thank yeah. you for joining us. I oh, mean, my this is so exciting for me. I always uh, love having famous people on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's I don't always, know about famous. I don't know. I think you are. You, you get to go to see the Emmys. I don't know if I'll ever get there, but yeah, you know, I mean, you get to do that, and that's pretty nice. You get to now. Here's the first question I'm asking about the Emmys, and then we'll go into Friday Night Lights. Tell me about the red carpet. Have you been told if you're allowed to walk along the red carpet? Uh, I'm not sure whether or how that's working yet. We, I know there's a lot of parties, there's a lot of paparazzi, and they tell me there's cameras everywhere. So be prepared for um, uh, long, long evenings, long evenings, and lots of photos and lots of interviews. So it'll be uh, it'll be a good time. Well, I'm, I'm very lots excited of, for lots you. Of, lots of fun work. Yes, that's the fun work. Absolutely. When, well, let's let's get right into Friday Night Lights. Um, a lot of people on first blush, when they hear Friday Night Lights, they think of Texas football. Right. 
Has it been contained in Texas, or has this been far-reaching outside of the borders of the state of Texas? Oh, it's, that's a great question. And, you know, the truth of the matter is that people involved in, I, be, I believe that if they grew up in a town that wasn't a giant urban community, no matter where it was, even in other countries, we have people come up to us from Australia, from England, that watch the show overseas, and they say, oh, we knew this player. We knew this coach. We had a coach like that. We, we knew that booster guy like Buddy Garrity, who, and we had that, that car dealer who, who was the guy with the money and wanted to be manipulative. And, and yet it was hockey in Canada or it was soccer in England or, or rugby in Australia. So the, the story is, is more the story of the people and we found it to be a universal story about growing up in high school and those relationships and, and those great players and those boys who, who got in trouble and, and the girls. And, and so it's been, uh, it's, it's been wonderful to see how, how that story transcends uh, n not just Texas football but, but into the other sporting arenas as well. You know, Friday Night Lights really has had a heck of a run. You know, from I believe what 2004 till 2011. Is that right, Brad? Or well, we had five years, five years on prime time. So uh, pretty lucky as an actor. We're all, we all feel fortunate. And so, and let's talk about NBC for a moment. I mean, NBC is this huge broadcasting company who has to be real guarded about freedom of, of abilities and improvisation by actors because they are afraid of what the I would imagine what the the folks that are watching what's being said uh, and what can be placed on the air. Did NBC, did they guard you guys or did they let, turn you loose and say, hey, let's make this a show? You know, from the very, from day one, Peter Berg, who conceived uh, the film uh, from the book and, and then the, the TV show, told us in the very first meeting, he said, guys, these are your characters and I want you to play it and play it the way you believe it to be true. And if it's not coming from the truth, throw the script away. And so from, from day one, we were told that we had freedom with that script. And that is really unheard of in primetime TV. Usually it's every and or but. You gotta hit your marks. <laughs> and uh, we were, we were um, encouraged uh, to, to create the characters and say what we felt the characters would really say. And so we were lucky in that respect. It's one of the few shows I know of that does that. Um, so we were, we were given that freedom. I'm going to be shooting it back over to Kevin as we get ready to go to a commercial break, but what I want to come back with, Brad, my next question, I want us to use that to lead into some of your Plano high school days. I, I almost catch myself playing Plano senior high, but the question I'm that's going to right. ask, <laughs> yeah, that's right, I'm going to ask you though is, is can you relate some of the things that happened on Friday Night Lights when we come back to what happened in 1973 at Plano High School? So, ah, that's so when we come back, Kevin, I'm going to shoot it back over to you. Take us to Okay, I'll tell you what. Why don't we go to a commercial break right now, and we'll be back with more with Brad Leland right after these messages. Well, welcome back to our show, everyone. As you can see, we do have Brad Leland from Friday Night Lights. On. I was about to tell a story that we didn't quite get to because uh, we only had 10 seconds, but I'm going to tell this right on the air because it's one of the funniest things <laughs> that's ever happened to me in broadcast. And now, Brad uh, did plenty of work with the TV show Dallas, J.R. Ewing and the Boys, and one of the outstanding cliffhangers was the year Bobby Ewing came out of the shower. And everybody was wondering, what's he, he had allegedly been dead the whole year. And all of a sudden, he came out of the shower, and, uh, you know, Pam is uh, startled, and she just says, hi, honey. Well, what all happened? I was working for TV with the CBS affiliate in Amarillo, Texas, that night, and we had severe weather. And when severe weather happens, you immediately cut in. End of story. Well, when Bobby Ewing came out of the shower, our weatherman came on saying, this is Don Alexander. We have a wedding update, or a uh, new um, a weather update for you. I thought people were going to come down to that station and bomb it. I mean, we had we had nonstop calls for an hour. I can that understand. Sh that I shows think you the popularity of that show. I think it was the most watched show of all time, worldwide. all over the world. I don't know, but yeah, I think it was. Um, yeah, that was my first TV show, and that's how a lot of us joined the union here at the Dallas Actors. So. You, you know, one thing about that show that really kind of amazed me, though, they never really cashed in much on the fact that America's team, which the Dallas Cowboys were known, they never really had much about them in there. Or at that time, the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, if you can recall, they were the first phenomenon of cheerleaders who did those kind of dances and went on the sidelines and dressed in those kind of uniforms. Never cashed in on either of those things. No, that's peculiar. I've never thought about that, but they didn't. They just uh -huh. was, that was just not part of it. Uh -huh. uh, I'm surprised. 
I am as well. Yeah, I n I've never thought about that. That's true. Well, Brad, let me get, get you back to the question we asked before we went to the break. Because I yes. think it's an exciting story, first of all, that you get to play a booster oh, yes. on Friday Night Lights. And yet in 1973, you've got a bit of a storied uh, past with Plano High School football. Tell yeah. us some, if they relate to each other and what it was like playing in 1973 in Plano. Here's the difference. John Clark was so highly respected. He was our head coach. Wow. And Tommy Kimbrough. Hi, guys. And I, I love you guys. We all do. They still remember all of our names, even the guys like me who didn't get to play. But, but let me tell you, having coaches like that and the community respected them, the players respected them, and the parents respected them to the point that if there were, Buddy Garrity's, if there were boosters in the background nudging the coach here or there, saying things to them, having influence, it was not known. And I personally don't think, at least while I was there, that it was being done. I mean, there were booster club guys, and, and I could name their names, who gave money and had supported the program. Of course, this whole town of Plano supported right. the program. And we won the state when I was a junior. Uh, junior. But um, I believe that the, the, the boosters and the parents respected John Clark and Tommy Kimbrough and the rest of the staff, Sam Shields, and I could go oh, on, wow. Tommy Bardell and those guys, so much that, um, that that they let them coach and whatever they said was was the Bible and uh, and uh, if we got busted in the field house, we probably got busted at home. How so, exciting is so, that? So though? I don't believe, uh, you know, I didn't really get my information from, from having lived it. Um, and, and it may be the fact that, that, that I was just a kid in high school, but I, I really don't think it was going on. I think John Clark uh, had a solid program and, and had so much respect that that's just, that wasn't happening then. Uh, it was just understood. At, at Plano. Just understood. I, I think it was happening some places. Sure. Yeah, it really Kevin, has. let's take it over to you. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, among the things we've discussed here tonight that are probably the most amusing, you know, when you're talking about somebody, uh, let's say a character like you're talking about you playing Friday Night Lights if that kind of individual ever came up to let's say a Tommy Kimber or John Clark and told him how to run his football program <laughs> I would imagine we'd be looking at a collision something very similar to a, a Patriot <laughs> missile colliding with a scud it would have been a pretty good collision there <laughs> that's true or um, you just might have gotten a look from coach Clark that's about all it took but the look and uh -huh. hey, you know uh, yeah that's that's true. That's well, true. I'm going to finish this off by saying mm -hmm. the judge still remains one of the more <laughs> remarkable people I've ever been around or met because, you know, when he does things, he goes all out. And he mentioned an array of guests he was uh, aiming to get at here. And, of course, each and every time he mentioned the guests he was getting at, I'm just kind of, yeah, right, we're going to get that person. Well, he said he was going to get you when we got you. Yeah. We're very pleased. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. It's right before our Emmys. We're going to the Emmys next week, and maybe we'll win this time. So we're up for best TV show, and I'm, I'm proud to be here and, uh, you know, shout about Friday Night Lights as much as I can. Well, I can tell you, you got two people right here sure rooting for you. Oh, Thank absolutely. You, Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right, I'll Thanks tell you what. Ready. When we return, we're going to have a visit with, oh, among other things, another iconic name, Leroy Jordan. We'll be back at you right after these messages.